Studio on WeatherNet. Uh, lift off condition is looking pretty good. ATS is ready for launch. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Nine, eight. Slide ignition. Six, five, four, three, two, one. You're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 2.42 a.m. Eastern Time liftoff from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Hello and welcome to the live webcast for our 27th Starlink mission. My name is Michael Andrews and I'm a supply chain supervisor here at SpaceX. It's still Saturday evening here at our SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, but it's just after 2.30 a.m. on Sunday, May 9th at the launch site in Florida. Tonight's launch will mark a record-breaking 10th flight of a single first-stage booster. SpaceX's first reuse of an orbital-class rocket was on the SES-10 mission Way back in March 2017, we've certainly come a long way since then. In terms of our payload, Starlink is a satellite internet constellation designed and manufactured by us here at SpaceX that can provide a high-speed, low-latency internet to people living in remote and rural locations around the globe. To date, over half a million people have placed an order or put down a deposit for Starlink service, and with every launch, we get closer to connecting more people across the world. If you've been following Starlink's progress, you'll know that our Starlink beta service is now available in the United States, in Canada, the UK, Western Germany, and the South Island of New Zealand. And as of this week, we are excited to announce that we've expanded our coverage areas to include Austria and France. For those of you who speak French, you can now access Starlink.com en français, vive la France. As we launch more satellites, install more ground stations, and continue to improve our networking software, our data speed, latency, and uptime will improve dramatically. In addition to being able to provide our customers with better service, with every Starlink launch, we get closer to our goal of near global coverage of the populated world. As many of you might know, May is Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month here in the United States. This month is dedicated to recognizing and celebrating Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders that have helped shape our nation's history and culture through multiple generations. Here at SpaceX, we're committed to challenging all aspects of our business to make sure we're all around inclusive and that we hire folks from a diverse background. To kick off the month of May, we're proud to partner with our internal Asian American Pacific Islander employee network, known as APEX, to celebrate AAPI heritage and also support relief work in India to assist in COVID-19 related emergencies, but also to help end poverty and achieve social justice. To learn more about Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, please check out asianpacificheritage.gov. In terms of our mission, currently we're at T minus nine and a half minutes and all systems are go for an on-time liftoff tonight. There are a few major milestones to watch out for during our launch. The first stage, the first is stage separation, this is where the first and second stages separate from each other about two and a half minutes after liftoff. After stage SEP, the first stage will return back to Earth and attempt its record-breaking 10th landing on our drone ship called Just Read the Instructions. Now while that's happening, our second stage will continue on its journey. In order to get our satellites to their intended orbit tonight, we have two coast phases and we'll be igniting our Merlin vacuum engine twice with the eventual deployment of our Starlink satellites occurring around T plus one hour, four minutes. Currently, we're just under nine minutes to liftoff and all systems are go for an on-time liftoff this evening. With that being said, let's take a closer look at the rocket you see on your screen. Here's a live view of Falcon 9. It's our two-stage liquid-fueled rocket. Falcon 9 is approximately 229 feet tall that's slightly taller than a 21-story building. And like I mentioned earlier, we're flying today's booster for a record-breaking 10th time today. This particular first stage booster first flew on the Crew Demo-1 mission back in March of 2019 and has since supported two additional commercial launches and six other Starlink missions, not including the seventh one tonight. The bottom two-thirds of our vehicle is known as the first stage, 
you can see the soot markings left over from its previous nine flights. The first stage accelerates the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere into space with the help of nine Merlin engines located at the base of the rocket. And like I said before, we're going to be attempting to recover that first stage for that tenth time on our drone ship you see pictured here. It's known as Just Read the Instructions. Going further up on our vehicle, you'll see a black carbon fiber interstage ring, and on top of that is that white Falcon 9 second stage, which has a single Merlin vacuum engine we call it the MVAC engine. Once first and second stage separate at two and a half minutes after liftoff, the MVAC engine will ignite and eventually carries the Starlink satellites into an elliptical orbit around the Earth. And at the very top, you'll notice the large nose cone at the very top of the rocket. This is called our fairing. That's where the stack of 60 brand new Starlink satellites is safely enclosed. The fairing protects the satellites from aerothermal heating, aerodynamic loads, and contamination during its ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we'll jettison those two fairing halves as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. And similar to our first stage, this fairing assembly is protecting, it's protecting our payload tonight previously flew on the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 4 mission, and we'll be attempting to retrieve each fairing half from the water using the recovery ship Sheila Bordelon. In terms of propellant loading, we began loading prop since T minus 35 minutes, and it's still ongoing. We use a rocket grade kerosene known as RP-1 as our fuel, and we use a super chilled liquid oxygen known as LOX as our oxidizer, and when combined, they help power the Falcon 9. Currently, RP-1 and LOX are nearly fully loaded on both stages, and LOX will continue to be topped off right until the final minutes of Stage the countdown. Stage 1 RP-1 load is complete. In terms of weather, the latest forecast is 80% favorable for liftoff, and weather conditions look good for booster recovery as well. With that, the vehicle, the satellites, the weather, and the range are all looking good for an on-time liftoff just a few minutes from now. But if for some reason we do not launch today, we have a backup launch opportunity available tomorrow, Monday morning at 2.21 a.m. Eastern Time. For those of you following SpaceX, you know that it's been an exciting time for the development of our Starship launch system. Just a few days ago on Wednesday, May 5th, Starship serial number 15, known as SN15, successfully completed SpaceX's fifth high-altitude flight test of a Starship prototype from Starbase, Texas. Our Starship spacecraft and Super Heavy rocket, collectively referred to as the Starship, are designed to be a fully reusable transportation system that can carry both crew and cargo to Earth's orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Similar to previous high-altitude flight tests of Starship, serial number 15 was powered through ascent by its three Raptor engines, with each shutting off in sequence prior to the vehicle reaching its apogee approximately 10 kilometers above sea level. SN15 then performed a propellant transition to the internal header tanks, which hold landing propellant, before reorienting itself for re-entry and a controlled aerodynamic descent. Finally, the Raptor engines ignited as the vehicle performed the landing flip maneuver immediately before successfully touching down on the landing pad. Now these test flights and pathfinders are all about developing a transportation system that can help humanity return to the moon, travel to Mars, and even go beyond. Please stay tuned for additional test flights in the days ahead, and be sure to check our social media accounts for more Starship updates. We're currently about four minutes from liftoff, and Falcon 9 is now moving into those final stages of the countdown. We're currently waiting for the next milestone. That's where the transporter erector, or the TE, will retract. That's the white painted structure right next to the vehicle. First, you'll see here, it's happening right now, actually, the TE clamps have opened, and then the transporter erector will begin to retract away from the rocket ever so slightly, just a few degrees. You can see it happening right now, actually. And then it'll wait there for a few minutes, and then it'll move again at T minus zero. Hydraulics are gonna pull the TE farther away from Falcon 9 as it lifts off and helps create space for Falcon 9 to clear the pad. Think of the TE as kind of the umbilical cord to the rocket. It provides liquids, gases, electrical connections, all to the second stage, and also provides air conditioning to the payload fairing. In terms of propellant, the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Super chilled liquid oxygen is our propellant oxidizer, and that's what's creating those white clouds you see forming around Falcon 9 near the interstage. 
That's because the warm, humid, ambient Floridian air causes the liquid oxygen to turn into gas upon contact. The first stage prop loading is ending right around now, and the second stage prop loading should end stage one lock at T-minus two minutes. And we just heard call out that prop loading has completed on the first stage. The last big major milestone is T-minus 60 minutes. That's where we'll say that Falcon 9 is in startup mode. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. And just two seconds from liftoff, we begin to light the nine Merlin 1D engines, and we're set for liftoff. The Starlink payload continues to be healthy, and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather is still 80% favorable, and the range has cleared the surrounding ground, water, and airspace. We're green for launch in just two minutes away. At this point in time, just under two minutes, locks loading on the second stage is wrapping stage up. Stage two locks load complete. We've just heard confirmation that locks loading is complete on the second stage. You're going to start to see a larger accumulation of white clouds forming around the vehicle. That's totally normal at this point. Uh, that's because we've topped off the vehicle with liquid oxygen, and any excess there is going to vent and boil as yes, it close becomes exposed to the ambient air. This time, the first and second stages are beginning to pressurize for launch, and we're about 10 seconds away from that startup call out. Falcon 9 is in startup. We've heard that startup call out, and we're now waiting for that final go for launch call out from our launch director. Falcon 9, Starlink, LDs, go for launch. We're ready to go. Falcon 9's ready to go. All systems are go for launch. Now now let's listen into the terminal count seconds. and watch as Falcon 9 takes our 60 Starlink satellites into orbit on its 10th flight. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition and lift off. Let's go, Soccer, for number 10. Pitching down the one chamber pressure is nominal. Right, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Falcon carrying yet again country. another stack of 60 Starlink satellites to orbit. Just moments ago, we throttled the engines down in preparation for max Q. That's the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure occurs right after we go supersonic. After this point, we're then able to Falcon throttle the engines back supersonic. up. That call is just about 10 seconds away. Max Q. We've successfully crossed the Max Q threshold. We're throttling our Merlin engines back up. As, we're, as the atmosphere gets thinner and thinner, the stresses on the vehicle continue to diminish. And we're just about a minute away from three major events happening one after another. Main engine cutoff, known as MECO, stage separation, and second engine start one. To explain the first one, has begun. MECO, this is where all nine M1D engines shut off and they slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage sep. And that's where, once again, the first stage and separate, second stage separate. Stage one makes its way back down to sea level for landing, and stage two continues its primary mission along with 
the fact that the MVAC engine lights up and propels that second stage along with okay, the Starlink nine satellite is following story. a nominal trajectory. We're 30 seconds away from those events. Falcon 9 continues to be on nominal trajectory. Our MVAC engine is starting to chill to prepare for that second engine start just about 20 seconds from now. And shortly after these three events, our fairing will deploy and expose the Starlink satellites to the vacuum of space. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. Invac ignition. All good news so far. The nine Merlin engines have shut down, our first and second stages are heading their separate ways, and our MBAC engine has begun burning and will continue to do so for about the next six minutes. Fairing separation confirmed. We have confirmation, and you can see it there. The two fairing halves have jettisoned and are heading back down. As a reminder, this is the second flight for these fairing halves, and we'll be attempting to recover them once again via a wet recovery from the contracted recovery vessel, Sheila Bordelon. Everything is nominal so far. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. We're just about four minutes after liftoff. For those of you just joining us, we have a lot going on. On the right-hand side of your screen, you can see our second stage and its MVAC engine is burning, carrying 60 Starlink satellites to orbit. And on the other hand, we have our first stage uh, beginning its 10th recovery attempt. Um, as stage two continues to burn, as you see here, stage one is actually gonna execute two separate burns in order to make its way back to Earth. The first of which is the entry burn, just a little more than two minutes from now, three of those M1D engines will reignite. This helps slow the, the first stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere and reduces the loads on the vehicle. After that burn uh, starts, ends, and is confirmed successful, we get ready for our final burn, the landing burn. It's a single center engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship safely. And as a reminder, we can't stress it enough, tonight marks the 10th flight for this particular first stage. This is a record for our Falcon 9 rocket's life cycle. This particular booster first debuted on our Crew Demo-1 mission just over a year ago. Now, reusability is critical to what we do at SpaceX. This fact that we can reuse our first stages, it allows us to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket, which in turn drives down the ultimate cost to space access. And although this is the 10th time for this rocket, we first reused the normal orbital class rocket on the SES-10 mission back in March of 2017. It just goes to show how far we've come since then. We're about a minute away from that entry burn beginning. That burn should last for about 20 seconds. Now we're about 30 seconds away from that first stage entry burn igniting. The center engine will ignite at first. Two more engines will ignite shortly after that. The Merlins on this first stage are optimized to operate at sea level and they achieve about 190,000 pounds of thrust a piece during ascent and descent. Just a few stage seconds away. Stage has saved. A few seconds away from the entry burn. Stage one, entry burn startup. You can see that plume is starting to expand as the other two engines begin to fire.
Stage one, entry burn shut down. And there you go, the entry burn has successfully ended. And now we're just a little more than a minute and a half away from the Both final burn. Both continue to follow nominal trajectories. Now, for those of you who follow along with SpaceX, you know that the soot I see on a rocket indicates it's been flown before. Um, here's an explanation of how that soot forms and why that first stage is so dirty in this case. Uh, the rocket grade kerosene, RP-1, uh, that, Falcons, that powers Falcon 9 is carbon-based, and when you burn it, it creates soot. Uh, now, as we approach the landing site, like you saw just now, that long entry burn slows the vehicle down, and since we come in engines first, the booster flies through its own plume and exhaust, which Stage deposits soot on the rocket. And if you watch the feed, like you saw just there, you saw that soot starting to fly up and stick to the lens. And we're only about 20 seconds away from that landing burn starting. And also during that time, our four landing legs will deploy um, while that single engine is firing to help us safely land on just read the instructions. Stage one, landing burn startup. You see it there, our landing burn's begun. Hopefully we get Stage continuous coverage. Terminal guidance. And also our second engine will cut off shortly after this landing attempt. Stage one, landing leg deploy. We have continuous views right there. This looked great. Stage two, FTS is saved. And there you have it. We have a confirmation of a successful 10th landing of this booster and the 83rd overall successful recovery of the Falcon 9 first stage. Very exciting. This booster gets to live again. In terms of the second stage, we're waiting for that second engine to cut off. That second engine has Nominal cut off. orbit insertion. And we have confirmation from the GNC team that we are now in a good parking orbit. Second stage is now going to coast in this orbit for the next 35 minutes or so. We'll leave you with two things. We're going to leave you with this animation showing you where you're at in this coast phase, along with some groovy space tunes. We'll see you back here around T plus 44 minutes for that second engine start to phase. Acquisition of signal in Newfoundland.
his loss of signal near Finland. Position of signal and coin halo.
lost the signal good heli.
position of signal Diego Garcia. Welcome back to the live webcast of SpaceX's 27th Starlink mission. We'll catch you up to speed. We had an on-time liftoff at 2.42 a.m. Eastern Time, and tonight's first stage had a record-breaking successful 10th flight and successful 10th recovery. 
In terms of our second stage, everything is still looking good. We're on a nominal trajectory and we're getting ready for the SES2 event in a few seconds. It'll be very short compared to SES1 in comparison, just one second long of our MBAC engine. And after that, we'll go back into a coast phase, but uh, coasting's putting it lightly. The vehicle's currently traveling at about 7.7 .7 kilometers per second. That's over 17,000 miles per hour, a very fast journey for our 60 Starlink satellites. We may not have video of this event coming up, but currently the vehicle's over the Indian Ocean, and we're gonna wait for those call outs uh, just a few seconds from now. And then once this event is confirmed as being good, we'll wait to see if we have a good orbit before we continue our second coast phase before payload deploy. We're still waiting for confirmation of the second engine start and second engine cutoff, as well as confirmation of good orbit. But we, regardless, we are going into another coast phase. This one will be a little shorter. Um, during this time, not only are we going to coast to the correct deployment point along the Earth, we're also going to spin the spacecraft along its central yeah, axis. Yeah. This gives the Starlink satellites the natural momentum they need to space themselves out over time after they deploy. We'll check back in with you at about T plus one hour and three minutes.
West Tasmania. Good morning and welcome back once again to our broadcast for our 27th Starlink mission. Uh, one small note, shortly after we entered our current coast phase, we confirmed that our second engine start and shutoff was successful. We're currently in a good orbit awaiting payload deploy. Uh, but if you're just joining us, we'll click, quickly recap today's mission. Starting off with a successful liftoff from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at 2.42 a.m. Eastern Time. We then had successful stage separation. We recovered our first stage for the 10th time on our drone ship, and we had two successful second stage MBAC engine startups. 
Right now, we're coming up on deployment of our stack of 60 Starlink satellites. It's just about 30 seconds away, while our second stage is in between right. Australia and New Zealand. And you see it right there, actually. Those satellites are starting to slowly extend. Um, and shortly after this, they're going to deploy their individual solar arrays. And over the next few days and weeks, they're going to distance themselves from each other and use their onboard ion thrusters to make their way to their specific operational orbits. And, and with that, that will bring our webcast to a close for today. We want to thank the range and the Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. And thank you to you, all of our viewers, as well to all of our Starlink customers using our beta service at this time. Nominal payload if you're insertion. interested in being part of our beta program, please head over to Starlink.com and sign up. I hope you enjoyed the webcast tonight and a special thanks to all the mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day.